up relevant kingdom center i believe that this is truly the day god has made and we ought to rejoice and be glad in it man listen i'm just so elated that we've got alessandro major in the house y'all can y'all put your hands together and just bless the lord for the gift of brother alessandro who came to help to lead out in worship this sunday you know shari and i spoke and we wanted to make sure that we gave our praise team especially sister antandra a break she's been leading out y'all from the new year to now of course there has been assistance and help that's coming on board and we're thankful for everybody that's connecting to the praise team but we wanted to make sure that we gave her a break and some rest and of course we're going to have other people step up to the plate as well so that we could continue to function in a healthy way and that we could continue to lift up the name of jesus in a vibrant anointed way and pace and so y'all one more time can we thank god again for alessandro major that came amen to help relieve our praise team and our praise leaders amen well um you guys should have had a time on friday night and i want to say a big special thank you to those of you that participated in love yourself night of love of course to sister anya sister antandra um to all of the persons that connected and you know helped to participate in making sure that night of love was a success and whatever you did however you contributed we wanted to say thank you to you as well i absolutely love february and as you can see from the rewind last week was absolute fire and i believe that god is getting ready to speak to us again this weekend um how many of you guys are thankful for sister angelique knowles come on who's stepping up to the plate and god has anointed her for this task and we're grateful for her amen but of course i love february because what february does is february sets a pace for us to be practical but biblical someone say that with me say practical but biblical i like that because here's what we are we are a church that believe in communicating the word of god in a real and watch this a relevant way right so we want to make sure that we make the scriptures relevant to your life and in february we absolutely do that without fail um, the first weekend, of course, in love stories, we talked about your relationship to God and how God views you from a relational perspective, that he absolutely loves you and that he has given you grace and truth. And then, of course, last weekend, as we noted, that Sister Angelique just brought the fire and the heat as she addressed dating and relationships, courtships. Amen. And so that was absolute fire. And then today, we're going to be talking a little bit to the married folks, but we're going to include everybody because one of the things that we know about Relevant is that the majority of us here are still single people. Amen. We've got a few dating people, but we want to make sure that we, of course, address our married folks. And in this, we're going to encompass everybody today. So look at your neighbor say neighbor come on talk to a man y'all y'all i can stuck up today talk to him say neighbor god's about to speak to us inside here today amen if you believe it come on put your hands together and let's bless the lord all right let's get to work i am getting ready to pray and i'm going to ask you guys before i pray to stand so that we could go ahead and read our text for today and our text as you guys are standing because it's our custom our text is coming from genesis chapter 11 verse 7. i want to say welcome to all of you today whether you're home or whether you're visiting us for the first or the second time we want to say welcome to you as you're standing and you're turning it's also appearing on the screen for those of you that may not have a bible genesis 11 verse 7 it says let's let us go down and mix up their language so that they will not understand each other if I could tag a topic to the text, it will be, I just don't understand you. Can you do me a favor? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, sometimes I just don't understand you. <laughs> Amen. Pray with me. Father, I pray that I decrease, that you increase. Have your way. May the lips, may the word of my lips and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus name, may I communicate the word in a relevant way and in an effective way today in Jesus name. And everybody say amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord as you're seated we're going to go ahead to a love story from basil and andrea khalil 
my like my wife's beautiful parents amen and then we'll be back hi i'm basil khalil and i'm shara's dad and i am andrea khalil shara's mom we've been married for coming up this may it's going to be 42 years well i first met andrea when i was in um a youth meeting on a Wednesday in our church in Brooklyn. Uh, she came in with um, her uh, aunt, and um, the pastor of the church then was is, was my her, her aunt, and um, so they, you know, they brought them she and her sister to church for the youth meeting, and that's when I first saw her, when I first met her, and and my first impression was. Um, was one of admiration. I I saw something different in, in Andrea, different from the other girls that were in the church. Uh, so you know, I <laughs> I was impressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't say it was love, but I was definitely attracted. <laughs> I thought he was a good looking guy, and um, he had this nice big afro. Um, and um, you know. He, he, I think he was there with his brothers too, yeah. but yeah, he was just a big looking young man and he seemed like he loved the Lord, but that was just my first impression that he was cute. Well, within the 42 years, we, we had um, three children. Uh, um, shall se- I? And yeah. Seven, right? Seven, oh, is it six? Six grandkids. Right, right, right. Six yeah. yeah, so we have Shara, it is uh, Samara, Samara, and Jonathan. Yeah. Well, within the 42 years of marriage, I, I believe that um, communication is important. Um, and and if, I think uh, a, lot of, a lot of things can be avoided, a lot of arguments and you know, misunderstandings can be avoided if you know, there is some clear communication. Um, and I think also, I, be, I do believe that um, when when we pray together, it's also important because we know, you and I know that um, you can't go to the Lord, you know, in prayer when you're, you know, at in, at odds with each other. So if there's apologies need to be made, I think that that's important. So have you made a lot of apologies? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I don't know about her, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, on my end, I think all of that is, is correct, the communication, but for me, I think I have learned that the love has to be so strong to outweigh all the differences, yeah. because, because if you don't love that person enough and love God enough as right. well and look to God for grace, right. to, to, to do the forgiving, to do the apologizing when necessary. Mm-hmm. Then all we're going to see is the differences and the negative things, and and that will you know smother the love. But at the end of the day, you have to remember that none of us are perfect, and even if the person kicks you off with a bad habit or something, you're going to have to say, but nevertheless, I still love them because that's what God has done for us. You know, with all our sin and our faults, He still loves us, and so it, it it really teaches me that we have to extend that same grace in marriage that God has extended to us. It needs to go to each other. Because if not, then it's so easy just to fall, find fault with each other, and then bitterness comes up here. Yeah. But I think it's just having strong love and a grace to forgive. Oh, yeah, definitely. Without God, yes. it, it, it would be a no-go. It wouldn't happen. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have lasted. It would probably be another statistic out there with divorce. Yeah. yeah so I do agree with the forgiveness part because, you know, sometimes if folks, even if they may not apologize, you still have to forgive. Mm-hmm. You still have to forgive, you know, because um, sometimes uh, people can be stubborn, you know, we, we can be stubborn, I can be stubborn, I guess, I may not see things um, the way she might have seen something, you know, and um, and, and so I guess she would have to, she would have to learn to forgive each other in spite of, you know, regardless. I think I'm, I'm more romantic than she is. She might disagree. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? 
Well, I think I'm still romantic. Um, but I think to be honest, sometimes romance is defined differently by the sexes. You know, I think for the man, it has a lot more of the physical component, you know, of the relationship, the mm-hmm. love making. Mm-hmm. For a woman, it's just the little simple gestures and maybe the little kindnesses and the little thoughtful things for us that we can consider romantic, even without a big, you know, doesn't have to be a big overwhelming gesture. Just a hug or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I guess in that sense he is the more romantic as far as in that sense I think he's a little bit I think, I think when it comes to romance, but romance it's, it's important that. it's important that, that people hug each other you know, especially you know, it doesn't matter if um, who, who initiates it but one thing I can say is that if, if, I, if I went and hugged Andrea she would respond you know, to the hug. Um, um, but it's it's important that that at least both parties initiate that. Yeah. You know, um, giving giving yourself a hug. You know, giving them a kiss. You know, because sometimes sometimes you um the other person might might wonder, well, what did he have a bad day, or maybe did he have a bad day? Uh, so, so I think it's important. Um, uh, to to to, um, to initiate hugging and and that intimacy. I I would say, I would have to say I am the one that usually feels really great when I get a gift. Uh, I, 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 agree. I I love to get gifts yeah. and um although there was it, it was so funny because there was a time in our marriage in the earlier stages when every time I had a um, wedding anniversary came up, Baz always kept giving me a watch. And it was every year with another watch and another watch. So, you know, we kind of made a joke about it. It was like, I'm like, are you trying to tell me something? Because I was just getting watches every year. But yeah, he always gives me nice stuff and just over the, you know, over the years and I kind of get excited by it. And then, yeah, for me, uh, a gift, you know, it's neither here nor there. It doesn't seem to mean the same right. thing like it does to me. Right. And I know that sometimes I get on his case about, but the gift I gave you, you're not using it kind of thing, you know? <laughs> so, but for me, I'm always excited because I always, you know, I'm not usually sure what I'm going to get from him. So it's always a nice little surprise. But I think that might be the one that, um, that, that like the quality of time and is going to touch more than Jesus. Well, 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 I'm going to say that I like, I like quality time, but like for me, I think maybe, to be very blatantly honest, I mean, as we get older, as far as women, I think sometimes our, our, our sexual needs, um, we, we want to express in a different sense, not right, necessarily right. with the physical, actual act of love making, but for us, it's right. other things. Like sometimes, a lot of times, Dad will watch a different show than I will watch. But I wouldn't. I would love just to have him hug me on the couch while I'm watching television. Just that little cozying up and hugging each other. For me, that is nice. I kind of miss that, and I like that. You know. But yeah, I know sometimes for Dad, it, it may only be the start of something more. But for me, that. For me, that could just be only all I would need at that moment, you know? Yeah, she likes to cuddle. Yes, yeah, so I, I do like to cuddle. Even in bed, yeah. Even in bed, yeah. Even in bed, yeah. yeah she just likes to make sure. Yeah, when he's not in the bed and not here, I miss that presence. Because I just want to right. like, feel that physical contact. Yeah. Of, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I miss physical yeah. contact. When he's not in the bed, I miss that. It's important for her. Yes, I, I like so it. Right. I feel it's more. I feel nice. Even after 22. Yes, even after 22. I like to cut out on my coffee and I, and I like to hug him in bed and know that I can put my foot on him in bed, but my feet are not always cold. No, really. No. But it's just knowing that you're there, so reassuring and comfort. Yeah, I realize that. Yeah. My name is Basil. And my name is Andrea. And this, and this is our love story. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's give it up for Shari Eyes parents that was willing to share with us today amen they've been married for over 41 years 42 years and i can tell you man their marriage is still spicy still hot and they're an example to be honest with you to shari and i of how love could last amen now today as we get ready to dive into this text i want you to know that one of the greatest ways the enemies the enemy comes to affect relationships and one of the greatest enemies to healthy functional relationships is misunderstanding birth from miscommunicating hear me good misunderstanding birth from miscommunicating 
Now, the one word, hear me, if you can get this today, whether you're married, whether you're in a courtship, whether you're in a dating relationship, whether you're in working relationships, can I just tell you the one word that will totally revolutionize the, re the relationships that you are connected to, the relationships that, are you, that you are building right now, is this one word, communication. Now, the English word communication has been derived from the Latin word communicare, which means to impart or participate or to transmit. The word communicare is derived from the root communis, which means to make common or to share. You would also see that in that word commis, it has the, 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 the root word of community as well. So in other words, in order for us to have true community, in order for us to have real relationship, in order for us to have relationships that's healthy, that's fruitful, we've got to, one, be in community. But if we are to be in community, we've got to know how to communicate. And so I can tell you that if we can get this down packed today, if we can understand that communication is vital to effective and healthy marriages, vital to healthy and effective relationships, I believe that we will see God, God do amazing things in our relationships, amazing things in our marriages. And so the act of communication is to bring an understanding and unity where there is a divide. So if I communicate properly, it means then that I now bring cohesiveness to something that was once divided. That's why the Bible says, and the two shall become what? One. In order for you to become one, you not just have to have a physical intimacy, but you've got to understand how to communicate in a way that brings unity, that brings community, in a way that brings, amen, this, this, this sense of sharing, but not just sharing, this sense of oneness. See, I can understand you, and so because I can understand you, and because we're speaking the same language, because we're communicating well, we can truly become one. Without communication, it's almost like being in a car, but there's no gas. You can sit in the car, but you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there's no gas in the car. And so today, I hope that we could put some fuel in the vehicle of your marriages, some fuel in the vehicle of your relationships to help you to move to another dimension and to help you to move to another place that God would have you to move in. Can you just do me a favor, nudge your neighbor and say, we're getting ready to go higher. Come on, look at somebody else, especially if it's your spouse, if you're sitting next to them, say, baby, we're getting ready to go higher. Amen. And so now the act of communicating again is to bring an understanding and to bring unity where there is a divide. So to miscommunicate is to misunderstanding. Let me say it again. If I miscommunicate, then it means that the other person that I'm communicating to will misunderstanding me. So miscommunication births misunderstanding. So in order for us to come into agreement, we must be willing to come to an understanding. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, I just want to understand you. Hallelujah. So the enemy loves to divide marriages. Let me tell you something. If it's one thing the enemy would want to do, it's not to have you be fruitful and multiply, but he would want you to divide. Because he understands that if I can bring division, then I can affect the mission that God has for this couple. I can affect the mission that God has for this church. I can, have a, I can affect the mission that God has for you in the workplace. If I can bring division, instead of being fruitful, you will find that you're not functional because of, watch this, miscommunication that breeds or that is birthed from misunderstanding. So communication, hear me good, everybody say communication. Communication is foundational to functional, fruitful, and healthy relationships. I think I better say that one more time, and I want to say it a little slower. So communication is foundational, everybody say it's a foundation, meaning that I am going to stand on this thing. It's foundational 
to a functional, fruitful, and healthy relationship. So what am I doing today? I am taking my time to give you something to stand on. Why? Because I believe that God wants to mend. God wants to heal. And God wants to bring us to a place, whether in our marriages, whether in our working relationships, whether in our friendships, listen to me, to a place where we can stand on something that will help us to do what he's called us to do. Hallelujah. Everybody say, we're getting ready to function right. We're getting ready to function right. So communication then, watch this, is the process by which information is transmitted between individuals or organizations so that an understanding creates results. When we communicate right, we'll see results in our marriages. When we communicate properly, we will see results in our church. When we communicate properly, we will see results in our friendships and in the relationships that we have. Watch one of the things that Mr. Khalil said in our story. He said that one of the things that helped them to survive this much years in marriage was communication. He actually said that communication was foundational to them being able to withstand all of the fight all of the, 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 the diversity or the, the, the adversity that would come from the enemy. Come on now, somebody, because watch this. They were able to communicate, but they were able to understand each other. It didn't mean that there was never a misunderstanding, but what it means was that they were mature enough to come to a place where they can come to a conclusion of understanding, where they can actually, watch this, resolve the conflict, resolve the barrier, that was trying to divide them at any point in their marriages. And I'm telling you, one of the things that we're missing as a people, one of the things that some of our marriages are missing is the, the ability to have proper conflict resolution that comes from proper and true and healthy communication. Let me say it again. If you want to resolve some issues in your marriage, then find yourself to a place where you can actually have healthy communication. How much of you need some conflicts resolved? Yeah, all of us need conflict resolution. Amen. And so that's why we say that, watch this, when we effectively communicate, it creates results. It creates results. And so a lot of the issues, a lot of the frustrations could be solved in our relationships if we learned how to communicate and how to speak each other's language. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now that brings me to our text of Genesis chapter 11. Of course, we read from verse, verses 7, but I'm going to actually read the story. Because here we have a story of how communication was pr producing results. But watch this, it was the wrong results because it was results coming from the wrong motive. But we can see if we have the right motive, if we've got the pure heart, if we have the right intentions, the intentions that God would have us to have, then we would see the results that God would want us to see. And so in Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, at first, the people of the whole world had one language. How much language did they have? Come on, relevant. Y'all don't fall asleep on pastor today. How much language did they have? They had one language. And watch this. And they used the same words. Okay, I don't want to go too fast. Amen. Because you can't just read the Bible. You've got to read the Bible. There is a difference between language. And there is a distinction between words. Because you could use a lot of words. But not still speak the same language. <laughs> Come on, somebody all to teach this thing. Come on, all to teach this thing. I'm teaching better than y'all shouting today. And so the Bible says that they had one language and they used the same. What kind of words? The same words. And watch this now. As they wandered about in the east, they came to a plain in Babylonia and they settled there. They became a community there. They had unity there. <laughs> they shared things in common there. And they said one to another, come on, let's make bricks 
and baked them so hard so that they had bricks to build with and tar to hold them together. What did they decide to do when they had community? Because they had the same words and because they had one language, watch this, they now decided to have a purpose. Can I just tell you, when you get together with a marriage, with your spouse in a marriage, or even when you're courting, I don't even like the word dating if I be honest with y'all, because we talk about purpose dating. We talk about the fact that if this, this dating relationship doesn't have a purpose and it ain't going nowhere then we might as well don't waste our time because it gives the enemy too much room to maneuver amen too much room to distract like sister angelique say amen we got to make sure that we understand how to be single first amen before we start dating the moment we get to understand ourselves we could connect to somebody else because i've got purpose and now i want to connect with somebody that complements or pushes pushes me toward the purpose that god has for me and then dating should always be done with a purpose, right? But not just dating, y'all. Marriage. Marriage should always be with a purpose partner. I want to be married to somebody that I can come into agreement with. Come on now, somebody. I want to be married to somebody that there is no divide, that we speak the same language. Y'all ever heard somebody say, boy, you speak in my language. Come on now, somebody. And you get excited about that when somebody says something that, watch this, you could amen. Or that you could agree to because you understand that there is a kindred spirit there's something that we've got in common communis community there's something that can bring us together and that we can all pursue this one purpose and so you can see that they had one purpose everybody say one purpose and they decided to do that one thing in a united front now they said let us build a city watch this which with a tower that reaches to the sky, that we can make a name for ourselves and not be scattered all over the earth. Then the Lord came down. God decided I've got to come down and see what these folk doing. The Bible says, then the Lord came down. And what did the Lord do? He came to see what they were doing. He saw the city and the tower which they had built. Now watch this. And he said, now then, these people are one. These are all one people, and they speak one language. This is just the beginning of what they are going to do. Soon, they will be able to do anything they want. Hear me good. Because this is the crux of the message today. I don't want you to miss this. Because they were of one language, because they speak, spoke the same words, and they were in agreement, God himself said that these people will be able to do anything they want. Can I just tell you, if it's the right motive, and if you will have a pure heart, then God is going to want you to do the thing that he has called you to do according to his will and according to his word. And again, I tell you, the reason why God had a problem with this is because the people had the wrong intention. The people had the wrong motive. The people had the wrong heart. It was to build a name for themselves. They wanted to watch this become like God. It was the same sin that caused Adam and Eve to cause, cause them to want to eat of that fruit. Because watch this, they had so much pride as a result of what the serpent spoke to them that he said that you would become like God. God is afraid that you would become like him if you were to eat the fruit. It was, watch this, the serpent causing a barrier in the communication between God and Adam and Eve. And their pride now caused them to want to do something that was outside of the will of God. And so here it is. The same function is happening. The malfunction is happening. These people had the right language because it was one. And they had the right words because it was the same. But they had the wrong motive and intention. And here's what I want to tell somebody. If you and your spouse can come together... And if you guys can agree on doing the thing that will bring God glory and not just a name for yourselves. Come on. Relevant Kingdom Center, can I just step out of the lane of marriage real quick? And I can tell you that if we as a church come together and we've got pure hearts, we've got the right intentions, and we've got right motives, there is nothing that we cannot do if we've got the same words and the same language. Someone shall preach. 
I don't know if y'all could feel this like I could feel it. Amen. But I'm seeing some marriages that's getting ready to go to another level. I'm seeing some couples that you guys have had some plans that you've written down. And God is getting ready to put his hand on those plans. Because watch this. You guys are going to come to an agreement. You're going to come to an understanding that is going to revolutionize your marriage. That is going to revolutionize the things that you put your hands to. That is going to cause you to go to a next level. Is there anybody up in here that ready to go to this next level because you've got a firm foundation that you're getting ready to stand on he says these people will be able to do anything they want so now here's what God said let us go down see we got to pause I got to go because I got some more to, to tell you I, I'm full today amen but can I just tell you that we can see now that even God is one God he is three distinct persons, but yet he is one. Because the Bible says in verse 5, then the Lord came down. And then in verse 7, it said that the Lord said, let us. So what does it tell me? It tells me that even God have to be in agreement with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus was asked the question of when will we see the Father? And Jesus responded, if you've seen me, then you've seen the Father. In other words, the Father and I are one. Come on now, somebody. So the three are distinct, but yet they are one. That's the power of agreement. Because when we come into agreement, watch this, then we can become like our God and our King. Amen. And within the right motive and with the right mindset and with the right heart, there is nothing that will be impossible if we not just believe, but if we become one. Everybody say one. He says, let us go down and mix up their language so that they will watch this not understand each other can I tell you why you've been having so much friction is because you haven't been understanding one another can I tell you why your marriage seemed to be on the rocks it's because you have not been understanding one another can I tell you why there's so much confusion in your friendships and in your relationships and in your workplace amen when it comes to you and others it's because there has been a misunderstanding you do not understand each other but everybody say we're getting ready to understand come on somebody shout we're getting ready to understand and so here's what I want you to note if you're taking notes, write this down. Communication is twofold. It's words, but it's also language. Everybody say language and words. So when we think about words, right, or communication on the whole, words and language, it is a system of communication used by a person or a spouse to communicate their desires. You see, there is a different language, and the language that we have is based on how we were grown up. As a matter of fact, we communicate through the filter of a lot of times our feelings and the filter of how we grew up. We communicate through the system or the filter of how we see the world. How I see you is how I see me. That's why it was so good what Angelique said last week, weekend in our message. She says you've got to fall in love with yourself. You've got to understand yourself before you commit to understanding somebody else. Because watch this, I've got to make sure that I have a healthy worldview uh, so that I can have a healthy relationship with the world around me or with the person connected to me. And so it's a system of communication. So we all communicate with words but watch this, if it's not our language, we won't be able to come to an understanding. There will be a barrier. Everybody say a barrier. So that's what we're getting ready to break down, the barrier in a moment, the barrier to understanding. So here's what I would like to do. I would like for us to break this communication barrier in the last few moments that I've got. Amen. Watch this. Communication includes, hear me good, not just words, but in order for us to have healthy understanding, our communication has to also include listening. So we can't understand our spouse's language if we don't listen. Can I just say it again? We can't understand how people see their worldview 
and how people filter what is being said if we don't understand their language. And so in order to understand, we've got to listen. Everybody say, listen. Because we're good at talking. Come on now, somebody. We are good at talking, but we are not good at listening. And if we would listen a little bit more, here's what would happen. We would begin to respond rather than react. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. You see, a lot of our communication is based on reaction that is filtered, watch this, through the wrong feelings. And so if I would be more slow, watch this, to speak, and faster to listen, then watch this, when I communicate with you, I don't just react, I respond. And so here's what the scripture says. The scripture says, know this beloved, brothers, in James 1 verse 19. Let every person be quick to hear and slow to speak and slow to anger. See, because if I listen more, I respond more and I react less. And watch this, I even get angry less because I'm not just operating on feelings. So communication must include listening. Communication, here's the second point, must be done with grace and wisdom. Everybody say grace and wisdom. Here's what Colossians 4 verse 6 says. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Can I just tell you, communication takes skill. It takes knowing when to speak and when not to speak. It takes knowing timing and tune. Woo, come on now, somebody. I wish someone would get this today. Because sometimes we speak out of time and we use the wrong tune. <laughs> And so communication, when we saw, talk about grace and wisdom, it tells us then that we've got to understand the right timing. I can tell you all the truth. When it comes to Shari and I, I know that there are times that I would say something in the wrong time, and I would say it in the wrong tune. Now, y'all know how that goes for me, right? <laughs> it doesn't go too well, or vice versa. And so what we've got to do, we've got to make sure that we have our communication, our, our words, and even our language, amen, seasoned with salt, which is grace and wisdom. Watch what Colossians 4 verse 6 says. Let your speech always be gracious, again, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer each person. So don't communicate out of a place of being filtered through your feelings or your frustrations or your anger because the end result will not be fruitful. Proverbs 12 verse 18 says this, There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Can I tell you, if you use wisdom and if you use grace with your words, if you use the right timing and the right tune, and you seek to respond, not just to react, I can tell you, you would bring healing to a lot of areas and a lot of issues in your marriage. I'm telling y'all, thank Pastor later for this, because I'm telling you, if you get a hold of this, it will revolutionize your relationship, your marriage. Here's the other thing about communication, and I'm almost done. Communication must be selfless. Everybody say selfless. See, the Bible says that seek to understand each other if you want to dwell with each other. We must dwell with each other in understanding. And in order for me to understand, Shari, I can't be selfish. I can't just want to be heard. I've got to understand how to hear her. Let me say it again. I can't just want to be heard with my kids. I've got to seek, even though I'm the parent, to also understand them. What does that require? That requires self-sacrifice. That requires selflessness, not selfishness. Because a lot of times, we want to be heard, but we don't want to hear nobody else. And so watch this. The Bible says this in Proverbs 18, verse 2. A fool takes no pleasure in understanding but only in expressing his opinion. Ouch. Hallelujah. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. I'm telling you all, we're being practical but biblical. Amen. This month, come on, let's put our hands together if you believe that these points are getting ready to revolutionize your marriage. Come on, you could do better than that. Look at your neighbor say, get ready for a revolutionary marriage. Get ready for revolutionary relationships. 
Because at the end of the day, we understand then, lastly, and I'm, I'm out of here, communication must be done in a common language. Pastor Dury, you're kind of confusing me with this thing about communication, words versus language. There's a distinguished distinction you said. See, because here's the, the thing about language, and I'm, I'm done on this. All of us psychologically have a language that communicates love to us. There is a book that was written that talks about love languages. It is the system of beliefs of how we filter our world. And so there are five different languages when we come to understand each other. So not just in our words, but our languages. And I'm going to give you all five of them real quick, and then we're going to get out of here. There is the words of affirmation. In other words, your spouse's language, they feel love when you speak well to them. When you acknowledge certain things that they did. So, you know, you go to them and you was like, baby, my goodness, ain't nobody could wash dishes like you. Baby, ain't nobody could throw down in the kitchen like you. You know what you do? You just spoke a language. And so now, instead of you forcing her to cook some dinner for you, instead of you forcing her, amen, to clean the house or him, amen, because I know some fellas could throw down in the kitchen too, right? Bef instead of you forcing them, here's what you did. You just spoke their language. You gave them affirmation that tells them, I'm love. That watch this, you acknowledge and you that you understood my language. And now I feel good doing what I'm doing for you because you speak in my language. Then there's quality time. So there are times when your spouse feels love, her language, his language is not when you give them words of affirmation, not when you tell them nice things, but they just want to spend quality time with you. They would rather, amen, sit down, Netflix, and chill. Come on. They don't want to always go out and hang out with a crew. They just want it to be the two of you. Amen. Just the two of us. Come on now, somebody. We could make it if we try. Y'all know I can't go a sermon without singing some kind of song, right? And so there's quality time. Then there's gift receiving. Your spouse feels love when you buy them something. My mother-in-law talked about the fact that Baz would buy her a watch every year for her anniversary. And she was like, oh gosh, another watch? It became a joke. And then there's acts of service now. This is a big one for me. Because Shari could tell you, I feel loved when she does stuff for me. And to be honest with you, I know if she knew I was this needy, she probably wouldn't marry me. <laughs> Amen. But there's acts of service. Your spouse or the person feels love when you do certain things for them. And then there's physical touch. Now, this is a big one for Shari because, see, I'm not a touchy-feely person. But I realize that Shari, too, is just like a mother, <laughs> like mother, like daughter. And that's the thing about language. Language is usually a system that you've been brought up under. And her mom is the one that absolutely loves physical touch through. Watch this cuddling. It doesn't mean that we've got to be sexual. I just need a hug. I just need a reassurance. For Shari, she loves to cuddle. I get claustrophobic. But you know what? I don't complain. Because I know that that's her love language. See, this is what we talk about when we come to the place of being selfless. To understand. Everybody say understand. To understand each other. So in order to know your spouse's language and able to be able to come to an understanding in your communication, all of those previous points that I've mentioned are very important. How do I know my spouse's love language? Listen. How do I know the person that I am in relationship with their love language? Be selfless. Use grace and wisdom and patience so that, watch this, you can be able to have a functional and a fruitful relationship. Here's my bottom line. One of the greatest enemies to a healthy, functional relationship is misunderstanding that is birthed from miscommunicating. And so from this day on, here's my encouragement relevant. Let's seek to understand each other. Come on, I'm talking to every couple in this place. I'm even talking to those of you that are connected to Relevant Kingdom Center, to this community of believers. Let's seek to understand each other because when we do, there is nothing that will be impossible to us. If you believe it, give God a praise right there. Come on, you could do better than that. Give God a praise right there. 
everybody hands lifted really quickly everybody hands lifted father i pray for every marriage in this place i pray father god that there will be a healing oh god that will come to their communication to that their relationships and even father god when we learn to communicate with you we can learn to communicate with our spouses with the people that are in our lives in the relationships in our lives we can communicate with them in a better way and so i pray now that there will be healing oh god to relationships because there will not longer be misunderstandings and father god they will be able to resolve conflicts because they will not react they will not react they will respond in jesus mighty name amen come on let's give god a praise listen i'm telling you i'm so grateful for relevant kingdom center because this is an opportunity for you to have life change in every area of your life amen in your relationships in your finances in your health and you're connected to the right community and so i'm going to invite up our service host who is going to continue to invite you watch this to come into one of the greatest relationships you could ever come into and that is a relationship with the lord your savior the lord your god don't leave this place without first knowing who god is and how he can actually revolutionize your life because when you come to know him watch this your communication is changed your language is changed and watch this the intentions and the motives are right and so come on up our service host and let's give that invitation for those that may be in here that do not know the lord and then we're going to go home amen after we have done everything else god bless you guys your pastor absolutely loves you